Hi everyone, Jeff Nelson here. Let's talk about omega-3 supplements, vegans, and dementia. I've got a series of videos on the topic already, but Dr. Furman recently sent out a mass email with the subject, study omega-3 linked to lower Alzheimer's risk. In the email, he talks about a groundbreaking six-year study that showed a staggering 64% lower risk of Alzheimer's in those taking omega-3 supplements. Whoa. And at the end of the email, there's a link to a blog that Dr. Furman wrote about the study. And that blog title is Omega-3 Supplementation Linked to Lower Alzheimer's Disease Risk. Okay, today I'm going to talk about that blog and see how accurate Dr. Furman's claims are. So I got a copy of the full study, and that study, which Dr. Furman is referencing, was conducted by Chinese researchers in China on 1,135 elderly Chinese men and women. And this was a prospective cohort study in which the group of 1,135 people with common characteristics were followed over time to see how many developed Alzheimer's disease. And then the group that developed Alzheimer's disease was compared with the group that did not develop Alzheimer's disease to see if any risk factors were more common in one of the groups. The researchers also did a meta-analysis of studies of dietary intake of omega-3 in relation to dementia. So now to start, we know that Prospective cohort studies have inherent weaknesses, and they're much less useful than randomized controlled trials. Uh, this type of study looks for associations, but it can't determine causes because there's so many potential confounding variables that can introduce bias. So let's look at Dr. Furman's blog post. In his post, Dr. Furman says that the study participants were followed for six years. Actually, the correct follow-up time in this study was an average of 2.81 years with a range of one to six years. You can see here in the study, it says a mean follow-up time of 2.81 years. Now, this isn't a huge deal, but the reason I'm mentioning this is because it suggests to me that Dr. Furman might not have actually read the study article and instead only read the abstract where they mentioned during the six-year follow-up, just as he does. But again, the average follow-up was only 2.8 years, not six years. So how the study worked, the researchers gave a questionnaire to these elderly Chinese people asking about their supplement use. However, other than omega-3, the study does not tell us about any other supplements that the participants may have been taking. So this is an example of a potential confounding variable. Back to the blog, Dr. Furman then states, Participants who reported they had been taking omega-3 supplements had a 64% lower risk of developing Alzheimer's disease than those who did not take the supplements. So what does this actually mean? Well, let's look at the study. We can see that it showed that 2.6% of participants who developed Alzheimer's disease reported that they had been taking some kind of omega-3 supplement for 10 years or more. Then it was compared to people who had not developed Alzheimer's, of whom 7.2% of those participants had reported that they had been taking some kind of omega-3 supplement for 10 or more years. So only 2.6% of the people who got Alzheimer's were taking some kind of supplement versus 7.2% of the group that didn't get Alzheimer's. And 2.6 is 64% less than 7.2, so that's where the 64% comes from. I hope that was clear. Again, the study authors didn't tell us what form of omega-3 supplement the participants had taken or even how much omega-3 was in whatever the supplement was. That wasn't on their questionnaire, apparently. What Dr. Furman omits in his blog article, but which was reported by the researchers, is that 65% of the subjects in the group that developed Alzheimer's were carriers of the APOE4 gene. But in the group that did not develop Alzheimer's, only 38% of them had the APOE4 gene. Now, having the APOE4 gene significantly increases your risk for developing Alzheimer's disease, and it's also associated with an earlier age of Alzheimer's onset. Here, you can see in the article, the authors noted that. They said APOE4 is the strongest genetic risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. Now, this is important. So the entire difference in Alzheimer's, in the occurrence of Alzheimer's between the two groups, can be explained by the fact that there were so many more people with APOE4 gene in the group that got Alzheimer's. 
In other words, the entire difference between those who took an omega-3 supplement and supposedly had a staggering 64% lower risk means that it could have nothing to do with the omega-3 supplement. It could all be attributed to the fact that the APOE4 gene was so much more common in the group that developed Alzheimer's. Dr. Furman also doesn't mention that compared to the group that did not develop Alzheimer's, many more in the group that developed Alzheimer's had a history of strokes and depression, as you can see here, both of which increase your risk of Alzheimer's. So there's another confounder. These are the kinds of things that can happen with a prospective cohort study rather than a randomized controlled study. The researchers noted these issues, but Dr. Furman in his blog did not. And these issues are probably why a weak study like this Chinese one is ignored by professional Alzheimer's researchers. Now, in his blog, Dr. Furman also leaves out the fact that the group that developed Alzheimer's and the group that did not develop Alzheimer's, they had identical omega-3 blood levels. Here, again, on table one, you can see they had statistically identical blood levels of omega-3, DHA, and ALA. Now, Dr. Furman is trying to use this Chinese study to push people to buy his DHA supplement under the premise that his supplement will raise their blood levels of DHA and supposedly prevent Alzheimer's. But there was no difference in the DHA blood levels between the group that got Alzheimer's and the group that didn't. Next, Dr. Furman talks about the meta-analysis that was conducted by the researchers. He notes that high omega-3 intake, especially DHA, was associated with a 20% lower risk of cognitive decline or dementia. Dr. Furman neglects to tell you that this is a meta-analysis that looked only at dietary intake of omega-3, not supplements. It says, association of dietary intake with cognitive decline. In other words, the meta-analysis in this study is only about fish intake and not about supplementation. So later in the same blog, Dr. Furman reminds us that fish is an unfavorable source of DHA and EPA due to microplastics and other pollutants, and that he recommends taking an algae-derived DHA and EPA supplement. The question is, why is Dr. Furman referencing a study that suggested benefits from fish intake while warning people not to eat fish? And why isn't Dr. Furman telling you that you can get the same essential fatty acids that his DHA supplement contains by purchasing fish oil supplements? They're a fraction of the cost. They're purified to remove environmental toxins. And you can buy a brand that has been tested by an independent third-party agency to verify that the supplement is safe and actually contains what the label says it does. Now, I want to be clear about this. I don't recommend omega-3 supplements of any kind, and I obviously don't sell them. But I do think consumers should be fully informed if they choose to purchase a supplement. Here's an example of a fish oil supplement that contains a total of 250 milligrams of DHA and EPA, which is the same amount of omega-3 that Dr. Furman's supplement has. As you can see, this product has the USP verified mark on it. USP is a scientific, independent, nonprofit organization that verifies the quality of supplement ingredients. There are several other organizations that do the same thing. This fish oil product costs $14.50 for 400 servings. That comes out to slightly less than four cents per serving. Now, let's compare that to Dr. Furman's product. As you can see, there's no verification mark from any testing agency on the bottle. That's because it has not been tested for safety or potency. Dr. Furman charges $59 a bottle because each bottle has 60 servings. That comes out to 98 cents per serving as opposed to four cents. So if you choose to purchase it, you're paying 2,500% more for a product that contains the same ingredients as the fish oil, but has not been tested. You therefore have no idea if it contains contaminants such as heavy metals, or if the contents actually match the amounts listed on the label. Let's look at some other details of the study that Dr. Furman omitted from his blog. First, this study was conducted on non-vegans, therefore it really has no relevance to the group of people Dr. Furman has been targeting to sell his DHA supplement to. Second, in his blog, Dr. Furman states that research has confirmed that vegans tend to have a low omega-3 index. Then to support this claim, you see the footnote, Dr. Furman is referencing his own study. A, this study here of 165 self-selected vegans in which his branded DHA supplement was being studied and promoted. But he doesn't disclose this in his blog that he's the source for that claim that he's making. 
In fact, if you look at Dr. Furman's study, it showed that vegans have a higher blood level of omega-3 than omnivores. Here's Dr. Furman's study. It says the mean omega-3 index, this is for vegans, the mean omega-3 index was 3.7, which was similar to that of a cohort of omnivores deployed U.S. soldiers from a recently reported study. Now, when we look at that group of omnivores, these U.S. soldiers who Dr. Furman's researchers selected for comparison, a group with the same ages and characteristics who had recently taken the same omega-3 blood test, it says the omnivores actually had lower omega-3 levels than the vegans. The vegans, remember, were at 3.7 omega-3, and the omnivores were at 3.5. So it appears you have to double check when Dr. Furman claims a given study says something in case it says exactly the opposite. The third point is Dr. Furman does not tell you about a key recommendation made by the authors of the Chinese study, a study which is the entire basis of Dr. Furman's blog. They state that a minimum of 1,000 milligrams of supplemental omega-3 should be used for the prevention of cognitive decline. Here, the authors say, risk of cognitive decline decreased when the intake of omega-3 fatty acids exceeded one gram per day. For this reason, we propose that one gram per day may be the threshold dosage of omega-3 fatty acids for the prevention of cognitive decline. This is the same finding as the recent USC study that I showed in my last video where they used spinal taps to measure how much omega-3 from a supplement actually reaches your brain. And the USC researchers hypothesized that doses of 1,000 milligrams daily or less of DHA are unlikely to affect the brain at all. So Dr. Furman, however, is not sharing uh, this information from this groundbreaking new study. Is that because the DHA supplements that Dr. Furman sells contain only 250 milligrams, just a quarter of what this study says you would need to have any impact? Is it because Dr. Furman has previously told people that they should avoid taking higher doses of omega-3 supplements higher than his product because they could be unsafe? I'll put a link to my previous video so you can see where the USC researchers concluded that you would need more than 1,000 milligrams a day of supplemental DHA in order for it to have any effect on your brain. And I'll show uh, how Dr. Furman has warned against taking doses of DHA much higher than his own product. Now let's think about it. Dr. Furman tells vegans they should supplement with DHA because they're likely to have low levels of DHA in the blood. And he claims having a low blood level is a risk factor for dementia. So he promotes a study that was con conducted in non-vegans that showed no difference in blood DHA levels between the group that developed dementia and the group that didn't. He then enthusiastically describes a meta-analysis of studies on dietary DHA intake from eating fish, and he tells his readers that this is further evidence that they should not eat fish, but instead purchase his DHA supplement. And finally, he doesn't tell you about the part of the article that completely contradicts his own dosing recommendation. Cherry picking the parts of research that you like and then ignoring and not informing your audience about the rest, this is not how science works, I don't think. This is how marketing works. At the end of his blog, Dr. Furman has links to both his DHA supplement and an omega-3 blood test that he sells on his website. I think we know the purpose of this blog and uh, why he's talking about this study and has very little to do with informing the public about new findings. Thanks for watching. I'll see you the next time.